Hey guys, ACCG here, and in today's video, I have a really, really fun deck, one I've been playing around with. So you may know that I have messed around with security control in the past. I still think it's very degenerate, um, but at the same time, it's still a very strong deck. And today's video is a look at mixing some of the colors around. So in security control in BT5, uh, black has been splashed into the deck because of the new fantastic options card that black has. But I just, I felt a bit meh, I felt a bit blocky, I felt like it asked a bit too much at times. So, uh, mixing that, I decided to try and give uh, purple instead of black a go. So this is a red, yellow, and purple security call list. I hope you enjoy. So yeah, let's get into the actual list. As always, if you do not want to sit through me explaining why I decided to run specific cards, my list will be below from um, DigiDev, I believe the website is called. Um, so you can just see that if you just want a quick snippet. I know some people do not have 20 minutes to hear me rambling about why people run a card that is OP. Um, so yeah, let's actually get into the list. So this is a bit of a new setup for me. I have um, my, my, my phone there. I think the camera quality might be a bit better if I do it this way. And then obviously you can see my uh, as again, uh, as I'm trying to keep consistently with, the cards will show up on the right hand side if um, you can't see what they actually do. Um, so you should be able to see a bit more of that, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, starting off, we are running just one baby in this list, uh, being Coromon. So this is the Coromon that I actually was able to get from the Evolution Cup. Uh, and it, it's a super, super nice artwork. Um, now, I do only run one baby, uh, and that's just because I, I really just like the artwork of this, and I understand the importance of running multiple babies, not so that you can go into them, but just to show that um, your opponent will not like know what deck you're using as soon as you like get your deck out to play against them. Um, but as there's no mulligan in the game, um, and the, the, there are obviously little things that they can do to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm playing against security control, maybe I'll change my play style to this. Um, but in the terms of things, I don't think it impacts too much um, for me, and it hasn't for me. But um, if yeah, if, if you aren't just running one fancy schmancy um, baby, then definitely run four or five um, uh, babies or eggs just to make sure that your opponent doesn't know that you're playing security control straight off the bat. But yeah, we just run the one egg and we're running this specifically just because it's red. It means that we can uh, play our red options cards without having to have a Digimon out, which is fantastic because it means that we can consistently remove our opponent's pieces by using those, well, options cards. Next up, and uh, skipping <laughs> level threes and fours uh, and jumping straight into level fives, we have Magna Angimon. So you'll know Magna Angimon if you've played against yellow in set one or more realistically, if you've played against security control before. Magna Angimon is just fantastic. I, I don't, I'm not gonna heavily go into what the effects of cards are in this video, but this just has an on-play effect of recover plus one, which is really, really nice because you really want to be getting as much security into that security as stack as you can um, to make your opponent have to swing and potentially hit options or high-powered Digimon um, so that they will be removed and constantly go in that cycle. So four of this definitely because it is a really nice card. Uh, next up, we have one of the best uh, megas in the game, especially in this deck. This is Magna Dramon. So yeah, definitely still running for Magna in this list. Magna is th the bread and butter of security control. It's the main way that you're going to have any survivability. So what its effect is, is if you have three or fewer security cards, you can recover plus two on play, which is just super, super nice. Then it also has a really nice when attacking effect of you may play one yellow level three Digimon card from your hand without paying its memory cost, which links into our next card. So something to think about when playing or playing against security control is if you stop your opponent from going to three security when they are playing security control, they can't magna. So if you keep them on four until you've able to build a board as long as they don't have board wipes or ways for you to be able to do it um, to remove all of your cards, which they sometimes do, um, but you can attempt to play around that and keep them up forward until you have a board big enough to attempt to just wipe out all of the security and hope they have some tamers there, some Digimon that aren't as impactful, or um, basically just hope they don't have a ton of options cards in their security stack. Um, so yeah, that's a, a little bit of a way to attempt to slow down security control. Uh, and next up, we have two Lusamon. So yeah, in my last lists, I've run three Lusamon. I, I don't think I've ever run four, um, but I, I, I've brought it down to two in this list. And that's because I heavily rely on it being able to be played for free from the Magna. Uh, and I don't want to have too many of these in hand because we do not have as many ways as drawing cards as we have in older security control decks. Uh, and because I'm not running black in this list, 
um, I don't have to wait to check my top three cards with the Izzy Tamer, which you will be able to do if you are running the black, yellow, and red list. But yeah, Lucimon's super nice, very similar to Magna, it has an on-play effect of recover plus one. Um, you can play it for five if you have five cards in your trash, and it's a 10,000 base rookie, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a little bit of spice and everything nice. I've actually wanted to like shove this card since it first came out into a deck and I never had the opportunity to, but now it has presented itself. This is Venom Myotis Mon. Uh, and I, I really love this card. So it's a 12 play cost. It has 12,000 DP and a Digivolve cost of four. It has the security get attack plus one just built in, which is nice because people don't expect you to be able to swing with security attack plus one uh, consistently when you are playing security control because they think it's just heavily removal, recover base, wait for you to deck out. Uh, and it also has a really nice effect of during your opponent's turn, when one of your opponent's Digimon becomes suspended, you gain one memory. So that means that if you're playing against green, if they um, rest their own cards using their effects, that means that you gain a memory. If your opponent attacks, you gain one memory. Um, so yeah, it's super cool. And the idea of purple in this list is mainly, not only do we have some nice removal options cards, but we're running uh, the carry tamer too, which will allow us additionally to gain memory. And we want it to be in a situation where if your opponent is attacking, they're gonna lose at least one or two memory. Um, and it'll try and slow them down so that you can either go for the swing kills with cards like this, or you can make sure that they keep passing their turn so that you can have time to recover, keep them on like on the toes basically. Uh, and um, and, and the, our long-term goal is still to get your opponent to deck out. Your opponent passing turn consistently by resting or attacking um, means that turns are going faster. And of course, I want things to go faster in this deck because this deck can uh, can really slow play sometimes. Um, not slow play, but take a while to actually like finish your best of three matchups if your opponent, especially if your opponent takes a game off you. So next up, we have uh, an absolutely insane card, and the last of our Digimon, it is Omnimon Zort Defeat. Now, Zort Defeat is one of the main reasons, again, why I actually decided to go with purple, because, of course, you can go on top of black for the Digivolution cost of this, but you can also go on top of purple, so you can still Digivolve this Omnimon on top of your Venom, Venom Myotis Mon, uh, as, as if you would when you were using black as well. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's got a Digivolve cost of three, uh, it's got an amazing security effect of you can play this card without battling and without paying its memory cost from security. So when you check this in security, you just get to play it for free. And yes, it doesn't battle, but the reason why it's good is because it has an undeletion effect of delete one of your opponent's digital. Well, not only that, we are running tamers that are going to give plus security attack to this, and it has a really nice when digivolving effect of delete one of your opponent's tamers. So when you digivolve on top of that Venom Myotis Mon, uh, you're actually able to get some value from that and still have that undeletion effect to be able to remove your opponent's cards. So next up, we look at some of our options cards, and you're going to see one that is, of course, like the bread and butter of security control, as I, I yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. It's Gaia Force, so we're running four Gaia Force in this list. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have to say too much. It's very simple of just effect of main, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. Um, yeah, it, it's super cool. And what we've actually went for and what I've went for in this list is to run more red options than I would yellow. And that's because we have that red baby. Uh, being able to consistently cast our options, play our options um, without having to rely on having a tamer out is really, really nice. So you'll see that we're a bit heavy on red options in this list. So we have four Gaia Force, and then we have four of the new BT5 options card for red, being Transcendent Sword. So Transcendent Sword is really, really nice, because it's a seven play cost option that has the main effect of delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 11,000 DP or less. And then if you have a Digimon with Omnimon or Greymon, other than Doro Greymon, Burning Greymon or Dex Doro Greymon in its name, you delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 15,000 DP or less. So if you have your Omniman out, you're able to do basically a second Gaia Force. So it means you're able to run effectively eight Gaia Force, which is obviously bonkers because Gaia Force is a very, very strong card. But just having that delete of 11,000 can come in useful at times too, to be able to remove some of your opponent's Megas if they're on the lower side of DP, or just to delete some of your opponent's Champions, Ultimates, anything that's straggling around, which usually is the case. Now, one thing to watch out for this, and to watch out in general for red, if you've played a lot of yellow before, you'll be used to reducing your opponent's DP, and I know I've made misplays before, where well, uh, this has come out and I've been like, oh, it reduces it by 11, which obviously, if this is against a 13,000 DP um, Digimon that's going to restand, for example, uh, that's useful. But 
this is delete. You have to delete an 11,000 or less, um, or a 15,000 or less if you have an Omniman out. So definitely watch out for that. Try not to make those misplays because you don't want to get a judge called on you for accidentally getting confused. Really, really nice options card though. Definitely happy to run four of those. And one that we're running four of, which I was a bit on the fence of because it's a bit so-so, but we are running a lot of Tamer cards in this list, so it makes sense, is Trident Revolver. So it's, Trident Revolver is a six play cost option. It has the effect of main, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. Now remember, again, same as the Trident Sword, uh, this is delete, not reduce. Uh, and then it has the effect of you may play one Tamer card with a play cost of four or less from your hand without paying its memory cost. I think we're running uh, eight Tamers in this list um, because we have some very strong Tamers. Um, so being able to get that free play of your Tamers out of your hand is really, really nice and really genuinely does actually come in useful. So yeah, definitely happy with that. And to finish off our red options cards, we have two Plasma Strike. Now I have a love-hate relationship with Plasma Strike because it is a four play cost options card that is the main effect of delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 13,000 DP or more. Now, very, very fantastic, very, very, very fantastic card when it's in your hand because it means that you're able to just kill a Lord Nightmon, kill a Shoutmon, um, a Shoutmon? No, <laughs> what am I saying? Uh, but basically kill an Omnimon, kill anything in the meta that is above 13,000 DP on your turn, uh, and that's fantastic. But when this is in your security and your opponent doesn't have one of those out, it's a fizzle. Um, but it's so consistent and so good to just be able to remove one of your opponent's main targets for four in this list, because playing against security control, you, you always kind of play... if. You, if you're not careful, you can play very lavishly. Um, you're like, oh, I'm gonna be getting so much memory every turn. But then I plasma strike you, or you get plasma striked, and you're on maybe one or two memory. Um, and then you're in a situation where you have to try and rebuild, but then your opponent um, has removed your big mega. So super duper nice, and definitely like the plasma strike. And it fits with the theme of trying to run a bit more red options so that we can consistently remove our opponent's cards without having to rely on having a tamer out. Uh, one thing to mention is all of the options cards have security activate this card's main effect and that's so that you have removal from your security as well. Next up we'll look at some of our purple options cards. So in this list we're running a three Trump Sword. So Trump Sword is it's a little bit like a Gaia Force so its effect is uh, it's a seven play cost options card I should state first. It has the main effect of delete one of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon. Now this is again another really nice card if it is your turn and you're able to um, use this options card on a mega that perhaps hasn't swung in yet because they're trying to be um, play slow um, try and do the play that I mentioned before of keeping you on four um, security so that you can't just mag Magnadramon, Magnadramon all the time. Uh, and also it has that security effect of activate its main. So if you're playing against the Lord Nightmon and they swing with Lord Nightmon and then play something, yes, you probably will not be able to, uh, well, get that Lord Nightmon, obviously, because it'll be rest, but you can remove whatever they played, um, which is just super nice. And actually, it does come in useful, and this um, is something that people just do not expect. Because you're not playing black, a lot of the time when they see security control, they'll try and play around the new black options card, which removes um, play costs of three or lower and the digivolves three on one of your things. So they'll try and play around that. But because we're not running black, that can actually come to our advantage. And to finish off our purple options cards, we have two of one that I actually am starting to really enjoy. This is Earthshaker. So Earthshaker is a rare that came out in BT5 and it's a purple options card that is, well, it's a six cost and has the main effect of delete one of your opponent's unsuspended level 4 Digimon and one of your opponent's level 5 Digimon, unsuspended, sorry. Um, really, really useful, can really actually come in clutch at times. Uh, in the matches that I have played, I've actually won games because I have been able to gain so much memory from my Tamers, um, because we're running the White Tamer, which we'll get into, um, that I can Earthshaker, remove a blocker, and if they have an ultimate, remove the ultimate too, remove the blocker and then swing for game, which is just super duper tasty. Uh, and it also has the activate main. Um, so when it comes up, really, really nice. So it's a nice one to just have in your hand for when it does come up. If your opponent has a uh, champion and an ultimate out, it's super, super great value to be able to remove two cards with just one options. And you kind of need value like that in this list because a lot of people are trying to play smart, go a bit wider, take the time instead of just rushing out stuff. You can either have someone who's going to try and swing all your security and get rid of it as fast as they can, or someone who's going to slow play, try and build the board, get a wider board, and then go for game. If you have the second case, stuff like this really comes in useful. 
Uh, and now looking at our yellow options cards, and now we actually only run a small amount, we run five yellow options, and that's because we only are running 10 yellow cards. I don't, I don't want to have to heavily rely on um, having a yellow Digimon out to then be able to play your um, yellow options cards. I think the best thing about this deck uh, and about security control has always been simplicity. Not having to heavily rely on specific things like that is key, especially in a meta that is so heavily full of removal. So yeah, we're running for Holy Wave, and the reason we're running this is because it really comes in good uh, and in clutch when it's in your security. So if you don't know what it does, it just has a main effect of trigger one recovery, and it's a six play cost option. But the reason this is so fantastic is because its security effect is activate that main. So when your opponent swings into security, Security, you get this and then you can just recover one which actually really genuinely can come in handy and also if your opponent's got something out or if you just don't have removal in hand it's always nice to just be able to build on getting that security super high next up and the last of our yellow options cards i'm running a one tactical retreat so this is very similar in that it's um security effect so it's a one cost options card for yellow it has a security effect of trigger recovery plus one which is exactly the same as holy wave so that's super nice and it has a, a kind of funky main effect of you place one of your digimon on top of your security stack face down and you can trash all of the digivolution cards of the digimon now this is super duper nice because in a lot of circumstances when you're playing against someone um there'll be there'll be times where you just will not win the game by removing your opponent's security so being able to place one of your digimon on top of your security for a cost of one can really come in like clutch because it's a one play cost to recover one and that actually is and um obviously you lose value by losing a digimon but in a lot of circumstances that isn't going to affect you too heavily also, if you're able to put, for example, the um, Venom Myotis Mon on top, that's a 12,000 DP Digimon. So whatever swings into that is usually going to be in a tough situation. So um, it's something that I've caught my opponents off guard with a lot of the times. If they're not paying too much attention, they'll forget that I'll put something um, chunky back on top and they'll swing in and it'll be removed. So it comes in useful. Uh, next up, we have my favorite card in the deck, uh, Kari Kamiya. So this is the purple options card. It's a three play cost and it has the um, effect of during all turns, when a card is removed from your security stack, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory. Having two of these out, not even relying on having that out, but having two of these out, your opponent swinging with one Digimon and then you go, okay, cool, uh, you lose two memory. So whether even if they're on three, it means that the next time they try and build something, they're consistently losing memory. And this works perfectly for us because we're giving our opponent so much memory. Um, and it's like the case where you'll put them to nine, to eight, very, very high. They'll play a lot of things and not take into account the fact that they're going to lose memory from the carry. Not only that, it means that we can balance out giving our opponents so much memory because people usually tend to play very greedy when playing against this deck. So being able to have that carry is nice and also it means that even if your opponent does know that this is coming, they have to take this into account and we want to be able to put our opponent under even more pressure, even more having to think and take into account and like actually add things up because we're playing a deck that heavily relies on our opponent already having to take risks by swinging into security. So Carry Kamiya really, really comes in useful and it's super spicy and super duper nice and I love it. Uh, next up, we have Tai Kamiya and Matt Ishida. This is the white option, uh, the white tamer, sorry. It's a four play cost and it has the start of your turn effect of if your opponent has a level six or higher Digimon in play, you gain two memory. Now this comes in clutch before with what I was saying about how you might have more memory than you would expect because of your tamers. When you have two of these out and our next tamer out and you're going to seven memory every single turn because you will not remove your opponent's mega, um, it really starts to add up. You really start to learn snowball, be able to get your recovery out, be able to play your other tamers out, so being able to bring all your carries out, bring out your Venom Myotis Mon. And it, it's nice because it means that even max, like even if you hard play your Venom Myotis Mon, you're putting your opponent to five. If you have carries out, they have to take those into account, so they're going to lose memory that way. And it adds up. It also has a really, really nice effect of during your turn, all of your Digimon with Omnimon in its name gain security attack plus one, which means that when you have your defeat out, you're able to swing into security with a lot of pressure. And even if the defeat is destroyed by that security checks, uh, you get that on deletion effect to remove one of your opponent's um, uh, Digimon, which is super fantastic. Adds super nice pressure to the list, and it's just a very, very good Tamer card.
Next up and finishing our list, we have two TK Takashi. Now this list, this one is a is a bit so-so. So the reason for it is it's a four play cost tamer that has the effect of start of your turn. If you have two or less memory, you set your memory to three, which is nice. Uh, works with the um, tie and map that we we're talking about being able to go potentially up to like five or even seven memory, which really helps. But it has an on play effect of you can look at your security stack and then reveal one card in it and add it to your hand. If that card is yellow, you trigger out recovery plus one. Uh, now this is scary in some scenarios because if you play this and you don't have a yellow, you actually you actually have to self damage. Um, that can cost you games. You need to be careful when playing that and. Sometimes you really do not want to see this in your security um, in like crucial times, but the value that it actually adds if you're able to get this out early, not only knowing what's in your security in a game, in a deck that wants to be able to like play around what your security is, um, but being able to grab one of your cards that will allow you to recover is super duper important. All of our yellow cards in this list recover. <laughs> um, it, uh, the only one that's so-so is Tactical Retreat. So being able to play this out and then have a look at what's in there. Know if you have a lot of tamers, so you need to play more options and removal heavy to stop your opponent just wiping them all out because you know you can't rely on your security having so much removal is good. But like I said, just being able to add these is nice. There's also a really like funky play of being able to play TK, take a different color other than yellow, and then if that puts you to three um, security, you could then play your Magnadramon, but that's a 15 memory play. Um, so you need to be careful with stuff like that. It's it's an option if your opponent is trying to do the play where I mentioned of just keeping you at four with that Magna. But yeah, that is our yellow, red, and purple security control list. I would love to know what you think of the list. I really want to know what you like, what your favorite deck in the BT5 meta is, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks.